Hello and welcome to, it's not quite Nexus Commentaries, but we're going to keep using that stuff because it's easier than changing all of that. Uh, but welcome to an NGS cast. My name is Majesty and joining me today is Leo Rice. Hello. Say, yeah. Uh, and we're bringing you the one and only action of Division A East, Phoenix Rising Ruby versus Academic Probation. This is their first match of this NGS season, so that's exciting. And uh, I'm just sorry, I'm looking because of the delay right now is when it's actually kicking on. All right, so uh, Phoenix Rising Ruby uh, PRR won the coin toss, and they opted opted for map pick, which is a little unusual. But some teams like to have specific map control, especially uh, for the first map. Uh, they like to have that. Um, so that, of course, gives active information first pick. The map bans, to go over real quick, uh, Dragonshire and Garden of Terror were banned by PRR. So decently large maps, but not necessarily the largest. And Braxis and Sky Temples banned out by Academic Probation. So both teams banning out large maps. Four, well, three large maps in Braxis have been banned out. And I got a ping... Um, we are going, sorry, we're going to Battlefield of Eternity. Leo, why don't you give us a rundown of Battlefield of Eternity? What goes on on the map? What kind of things do you like on the map? So with Battlefield of Eternity, you usually like some race type characters or some people that could do camps really quickly. Well, generally, heroes that do camps quickly can race for the Immortal too. So both work out pretty well. Yeah. Heroes like Ming, which is not normally played a lot anymore, besides in Battlefield, are picked. And and my favorite, Jim Rayner. Jimmy you gotta Rainer. have some yeah, you gotta have some Jimmy. Uh actually I think if I remember correctly, Ming actually has one of the highest pick rates in uh bronze. In like this map or in, in general, League. just in general. But uh, yeah, Ming Ming's played on this map. She's got good race, good poke, good team fight. So she she's pretty well balanced on this map. Uh, Vala is a popular pick on a lot of maps, but on this map she gets to go Q build a lot of the times, and Q build gives her good race. Um, yeah, Hanzo W build too, which is normally only picked on either Crusade Hollow or this map most mm -hmm. of the time. I know you tend to like going another build, but... Uh, everyone's got their own preferences for uh, builds and playstyles. Uh, this map also has a couple like decent decent picks for uh, offlane and stuff. Some flex picks that people don't generally get to play. I'm not going to directly mention them as we see them played because I might want them for my team later. Uh, <laughs> This is generally also why I don't cast teams in my own division, because if you cast other teams in other divisions, you're less likely to reveal scouting information on your own team to people that care. Uh, but yeah, Battlefield Eternity, pretty flexible map. You, had, uh, you generally do one-man top, four-man bot. If uh, you really want to think that you have the better race on the left-hand side, maybe you try to flip that, so that way you're closer to the Immortal. But, I mean, if you're closer to your work, first immortal race position then you're farther away from your bruiser camp but if you're racing you don't necessarily need the bruiser camp uh outside of xp uh, yeah, but it's nice to have something pushing so the enemy has to decide which what to do it's definitely a, a benefit you look for uh the only real downside is uh if you're racing then it doesn't really have time to push but you'd have to hard yeah. race. No one really has crazy level one race outside of Raynor. Because everyone else has race talents are at four or seven. Greymane's pretty fast too, though. That's true. Greymane doesn't have a talent for it. He just has the DPS for it. He is. He's just there. Stukov also then again, can do it. Greymane is not very good in the current meta. True. True. You could build for it, though. You, know, you can build for any hero. You could. It's fairly balanced right now. Uh, what kind of things would you be looking to first pick? Mm. I guess Joe, there's always Joe. And then it's like unique heroes like ETC and Garage to just like 
keep someone in one place for the immortal stuns. That could be pretty spicy. Ooh, do you think we'll see anyone pull out the old tech of Alarak? The defending comp with Alarak to shove people into him? That would be amazing. Because that's some spicy play right there. And we, you know how I enjoy some spicy plays? Dude, we haven't seen that since, like, Rich days in HGC. I'd love to see that. Yeah. I've been trying to bring it back, but I'm not a super great Alarak player. Trying, true, to, maybe trying to convince the people I know that play Alaric to do it. <laughs> but none of them like to go Telekinesis build. I think you need Telekinesis build. The, I just... think the range is really the big one. Oh, the, the level 7 Applied Force? Yeah. The slow just like traps them in. We could. Kind of yeah. nicely. But the range catches people off guard more. That, that's true. I got caught off guard so often by the range. Not the, the best only time downs, when you get... The biggest downside is you yeah. lose uh, Sages before it. Yeah, but you just kill kill more heroes and then you get it back, right? <laughs> Fair. Uh, it's also the only talent he has where you lose Sadism, but not have a mechanic to get it back. Oh, look like... All right, all Wait. 10 people are finally in lobby. Uh, <laughs> so we will be starting any second now. Uh, give them the, the caster ready, because I know some, some teams will wait for that. Heads up to all the other casters. I, as a player, will not. <laughs> Generally. Installing hot in his smart fridge. Uh, all right. Yeah, ready's coming out. All the teams said they're ready, so as soon as they click that button and we hear the announcer tell us Battlefield Eternity, we will be going. Alright, so you talked about Joe for first pick. You can also pick up a racer. Um, do you think we'll see an Artanis come out? Because this is like the only map you realistically see Artanis. Ooh... Artanis, it's a very skilled base hero. Oh, well, at least me, because I can't do it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, if we see an Artanis, you think we'll see the Arthas counterpick? Oh, fine. I I would love to see those drafts, but I don't know if the heroes would take it. I mean, yeah, the teams will pick it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it is, again, uh, they're both these teams' first game of this season, so there is no scouting information available, uh, conveniently available. I mean, obviously, you can go check each person's individual hero's profile or in-game profile, uh, but as a caster, I was not quite that invested. But, you know, later on this season, if we're still, if we're casting, you know, we'll bring this up and we'll be able to give you more details and stuff. We're seeing a white main band. That white has main. got to be targeted. Yeah, somebody has done some scouting. Blaze, oh. highly popular uh, offlane pick, uh, one of the top two offlaners by, I would say, most people's standards. Uh, uh, has a little extra benefit on this map. Uh, oil kind of just fills up the choke points around some of the immortal fights. You can just kind of slap it there. The attack speed slow is also insane. Like, one of the few ranged attack speed slows. And it can last, like, yeah. if they stand in the oil, I think it's like a, a six or nine seconds attack speed slow. The other band yeah, coming out from Academic Probation here is Diablo. Ooh. We could see potentially know. a Joe first band. It's... Yeah. Band. I feel like these are all super targeted bands. True, which means these teams are doing their homework. Because generally, Diablo is kind of slow to start off with. Uh, I uh, I will apologize to everyone who's viewing. Uh, I do not uh, have channel points, and that means we can't do gambling uh, on this channel. There is Johanna first pick that we talked about. Why is Johanna so good, Leo? Can you explain to the people why you might want to first pick Johanna? Uh, she can't directly do as much damage as a DPS or even top damage because I've done that before in ARAMs mm -hmm. and I can out damage all my ranged DPS and she is unstoppable as well as can control the fights pretty well 
And yeah. they're going green main against the Joanna. That's a... Mm, snap picks Sukov, and there's the Ming we talked about. Yeah, so we talked about some of these. Murden, it seems a little early for it. Uh, other things that Johanna has is the double blind, uh, which is exciting. <laughs> and uh, now we have Stukov. Stukov can get physical armor as well. It's uh, not always the talent that people pick anymore at Tier 4, since it was nerfed. But uh, having the 10 and then 50 physical armor against the gray main could be highly valuable. And keeping their players alive. Tychus. I wonder band. will we see the. Ooh, I wonder think... will we see the sledgehammer on four for Meriden? Is that why they picked Ooh, it up for the extra true. race? True. He could go go a race build on Meriden. Do you think this Tychus is uh, an indicator that they're going to pick another huge front line, another huge HP bar? Oh, do you think they are going to go triple bruiser for some? Dope. Oh, I was thinking just off, off lane Murden Chogal. Let's go. Uh, we see the Anduin band out now. Uh, pretty classic, pretty popular support. He's got a lot of utility options with a root and then the, the pool and his healing outputs. Not too bad at all either. Uh, good ult as well. Uh, one of the stronger utilities supports in the game. You know, two of his abilities are just straight about healing. Anna and Junkrat. All right, all right. Nice. Neither of these are bruisers. Uh, <laughs> Portro go. Yeah, I wonder which out Anna will go. It's it's gonna be interesting. Nano doesn't do much for their team so far. All right, is this when they pick like Tyrael and another dive hero to punish the Anna, or are they going to let Anna sit in that back line un? Contested, and then Junkrat's back there to peel the traps. We see Savannah's in Imperius. Imperius is not the most common uh, pick for anything, uh, really. I, I I don't mind him in the four man, but I generally don't see him in the off lane these days. But we'll have to see what James can do. It also gives them a lot of kill pressure in the off lane, right? No matter who you pick, there's always a chance that he can just land a spear and kill them with the percent damage. Yeah. I, I also agree with you. I like Imperius well, this one. You this can't one, stun him, but you still get the mark on him. You can do percent damage. Uh, Deathwing is another yeah. one that I feel like it should be slightly higher tiered up on this map compared to other maps because his Q just fills a choke point <laughs> around so the Immortal. The W, right? The W, yeah, it can. But it's just a little so, puddle yeah. if you're in range form. Yeah, but it's a little puddle that slows and annoying Alrighty, as we head into game one of phoenix rising ruby versus academic probation on the side of phoenix rising ruby we have deathwing being played by fear wahooey on murden daniel Leor on anna fraga stellar fraggy stellar on junkrat and mixels on Greymane. sorry about butchering your names and on the right side, we have Little Killer Pony on Joanna, Rand Died Nude Man on Sylvanas, Jamstone Imperius, Logicali on Stukov, and Koji Haru on Li Ming. We'll probably just be referring to him by his hero name all the podcast. Frag Stellar. I think he, him picking Junkrat is a pretty good. Oh. Righty, is there a is there a draft you prefer in this case? Fewer of these teams. Hmm. Actually, I think the I feel like the right side has slightly better race with the Stukov and the and the Li Ming. And we do have Joe to just blind the Greymane from afar. We do see the double blind count. We also see low blow. As these teams head out into Battlefield of Eternity, we see uh, we see PR here taking up the position mid lane. Some teams do this just in case you try to cheese or you know you used to actually be able to play for mid towers a little bit. As we're uh, positioned here, level one will begin. They will start wave clearing. Uh, Ming's gonna miss all of their abilities. There we go. All right. Um, yeah, they're just gonna wave clear. 
poke back and forth. I don't expect any big action until probably like the third wave. Sometimes when you'll see someone get poked down enough that they'll contest it. Top lane, uh, they're just gonna trade a lot as much damage as they can. Well, Jamster sure wants to trade damage. Uh, Fierce probably just gonna focus on wave clearing a little bit more. Ooh, double sleep. Do they have any follow up? They do not. Oh, Junkrat a little late on getting his uh, mind behind them, but now it's still sitting there, waiting to go. Logic is still just channeling the silence below. Pony's trying to bait yeah, out the Junkrat mine. Let's see who makes a play for the bot camp, because that's what people generally do at this point in time. Yeah, it'll be interesting if they force it if they try to play for a uh, pick before they do that. We're in jumping in there. So just going back and forth, uh, poking out. Pony's getting a little low, but she gets the big heal out from Stukov and the tap. Logic's going to get knocked back in, but able to walk away. There's another uh, W there from Junkrat, keeping him from getting the silence puddle down. Both teams uh, starting to show their wear and tear down here in the bot lane. Top lane, both people 100% HP. Nothing going on there right now. Down here, basically everyone's tapped on both teams down here. Teams are keeping an eye on that bottom camp just in case someone decides to make play for it. Level fours are starting to come out, and it is in fact Sledgehammer coming from Erden. We want to explain why you'd pick that uh, talent. So that gives 350 bonus damage to a non-heroic enemy, which is basically the Immortal. So they basically do a lot more damage to the Immortal. Bottom camp is going to be contested here. Uh, Junkrat W going to come out, but so is the Silence Puddle. Both teams are going low. Uh, Ponies, they're going to be low, but Ming's going to be the first to fall, followed by Pony. Muradin's able to step on now as Stuko is forced to back away, and Randai is getting low, down to 11 HP, but does Ooh. get away. This is actually going to make it so Academic Probation do not have the timing to get their camp now. Oh, and they're going to push down the wall. There they are. Oh, would they get more than the wall? Uh, I don't think so. Academic Probation's back up. Could be a little risky yeah. to try to fight. There is uh, another sleep. If, ooh, they woke him up before Junkrat could get the mine there. Going for it, there is the sun coming out now. Forcing Academic Probation there to get some uh, get some wave clear going. Where are they going now? Or they have to go touch a race, that's right. <laughs> I was like, forgot which immortal they had to go hit. But this is probably gonna, both teams looks like they're just gonna race to halftime. Murden trying to stall out a little bit, help guarantee that his team's ahead. And in fact, they will be ahead to the first halftime. They go pony trying to keep an eye in case anyone comes out. She's gonna run over, probably throw some blinds to keep uh, keep them from racing as fast as she can. But it's not gonna be enough. And the first immortal will go over to PRR. Ooh, they're actually going to engage on to academic probation here. There comes the sleep onto Johanna, but it's, you know it is still just a Johanna. She's gonna walk away. Some damage came out, but uh, no no one really that worse worse for wear. So now the immortal will be going top lane. Ming's just going to poke at it, it loses its shield, which means it loses its bonus attack range. Level 7 now picked up by Akron Probation. And uh, we see some Holy Forever coming out there from Imperius. That's going to give him some splashing autos, it's going to help him with his wave clear. Randai getting knocked into the Immortal Stun and then picked off by the Grey Main Junkrat. That was a really good Junkrat mine from them. This is going to give PRR the confidence here to tower dive a little bit onto Pony. But there comes Jamster up from beneath. They're going to get a stun there onto Greyman. They're looking for him. There's the mine forward for the Johanna actually using that to get on top of Greyman. Can they finish anyone off here though? They're trying to blink there onto the Murden, but it isn't Murden. He's got plenty of health left. Ooh, he's going to go down to the main Q. Really well 
uh, play there by affirmation with that uh, rotation up there to take that 4v4 into a 4v5. Great main in on the already here up on this top camp. Pick that up. Well, that's a Sevy you don't see very often on Joanna. Sins exposed. 35% healing reduction. Yeah, it'll help them uh, focus down the kill target a little bit more. Try to get that first kill to really get the Ming uh, resets going. So, uh, PRR just able to walk up and finish taking that uh, fort there while uh, active information do the bruiser camp. Bot lane, uh, they're, they're existing down here. They are certainly off laning. They are certainly just mounting and just getting the waves. Gonna drop that river a second as they look for the gank. But all right, we have tens picked up here on the side of PRR. They're actually gonna go ahead and do this bottom camp now, and uh, it's gonna leave this bruiser up here for alive for quite a while. But Deathwing's up there to try to deal with it. Uh, we're still waiting on Ana's ult. It'll be interesting to see. It's the only one I'm really expecting anything crazy out of Grimmie he could have gone either way. Ooh, they're looking for the Ming here. There goes to sleep. There's gonna be a stun combo on him anti-healed and Ming is gonna go down. It's gonna make it hard for academic probation to go in on this fight now. Especially he's down 10 still. Yeah, they should really just be they should be soaking for 10 if they can. Oh there we go. Shove, and we did get the nano boost. Uh, I can aim it. Some uh, mind who control. Who will be the nano target? Uh, probably just Junkrat. That'll be interesting. I'd probably do it on Junkrat, especially post 10. We have a forge. Yeah, all, all pretty standard. We do have the falling source. We are gonna have the unstoppable. Oh come out. yeah, you do Here get comes the, the rip tire. Ooh, it's too have getting low. Oh, He's gonna get deleted my. there. In the end, now it's a huge group there. There was the mind control of Murden. Everyone's getting low. There's going to be a knockback from the Junkrat onto Jamster. Can he find his way out? He's at 200 HP. He's trying to turn around now. He's going on the Greyman. Gets quite a bit of damage, but Greyman is able to finish it. And now the Ming's able, uh, able to get back in, but it's not going to be able to find a kill. Still trying to remove as much of that shield coming out as she can. If you're what active you in probation right now, what do you do? How do you try to get back into this? Just need to find a pick off somewhere, but unfortunately, Deathwing is really hard to pick off. Deathwing does look like he's gonna be trying to push keep a little bit here, which may uh, give Jamster the space he needs to run him down and try to kill him there with uh, Burn the Impure. Meanwhile, Active Probation trying to just do as much as they can. They get the uh, Mind Control into Grave but they're actually going to get slept. And then the Falling Sword comes out there for the cleanse, and then they're going to try to use it to knock up on Grave But the fort will go down, and they weren't able to find the kill they needed. 13's picked up now for PRR. As they uh, move forward here a little bit, they think they, they would probably get wall. Oh, that's great. Pony time. gets knocked up. Can she get out? No, oh. Johanna is going to be the next to fall. A little bit of mispositioning there against the junk rat. Just he's starting to get some really good minds going from this. Ooh, shove just back to the fort. If it was over a little bit, he would have gone for quite the ride. Jamster looked to rotate in a little bit, but decided not to. He's gonna go back looking for some XP, but Murden and Junkrat are here coming around behind him. He's still mounted, so he might be able to get away with it, but he's gonna get stunned. He jumps across the wall, gets some space away from the junk rep but ooh the deathwing sun lands he's still at half how much farther can he go his team is away from him right now fortunately he gets uh picked off there meanwhile Greymane was able to do the bruiser camp ming's trying to pick up some bottom soak and uh wall teams will probably just enter a little bit of a law here prr having the run of all the camps and uh then they'll just wait for the next objective Do still... Looks like we're going to see a camp invade out PRR, so Greenman's going to rotate into that so that way they can take it as a 5v5. Murden's down, but so is Mind Control. Camp's down to just the last minion. Can they even... They, 
they have vision, but they're just gonna have to give it here, especially down 13 still. It's probably just easier to give it defend. Uh, it's not gonna get a whole lot of value. Try to get 13. You are just paying the map blue. And uh, now we're just seeing PRR do some damage actually with this camp, uh, double camp top lane that they have here. Ming's uh, at a quarter mana. She might want to uh, tap her back before this uh, objective. So she can be full for the longer fight that they might have. But now they're able to get 13. They can take a pre-16 fight here on the side of active information. And that might be exactly what they need to do here uh, to get back into this. Deathwing Sun come out. Going to quick uh, stuke off there. But do you think they just go to the... Oh. Ooh, immortal Murden into Immortal Sun there. His Duke up a Deathwing not quite oh. in range there. But another Immortal Sun gonna come out. They're turning around. They are on the side of Active Operation trying to burn through this front line, but they're not quite able to secure it just yet. There is a route from Junkrat coming out, and we do have the halftime. Both teams not as, well. The front line for PRR a little bit low, but the rest of the team is quite healthy. Deathwing took to the air. He is sky falling down trying to get his health back. But there is going to be the stun, so Johan is going to finish it. Now it's going to be the slow on to Jamster, and he's going to be the next to fall there. As 16 talents come out for PRR. Now they're just they're on the chase. The big slow jump from Murden doing work here. Logic Kelly is going to be the next to fall. There's this another stun on Stukov, but Murden's low. He's going to be full, and then Ming blinks into the Deathwing Q, and he's going to go down as well. And uh, it's not looking super great for uh, active information right now, but of course the game is not over yet. PRR trying to secure top keep, they're not going to go for Immortal yet. Meanwhile, Deathwing is going to soak bot lane for that XP, try to get even farther ahead. We're going to see Shotgun uh, Spread Volley come out Ooh. from uh, Junkrat. A little bit more burst in some of these choke points. They're going to have to be uh, extra careful around that. Well, this I, I this is the first time I've seen people pick Eager Wolf or Greymane. That's a talent I don't see very often. Uh, it's gonna give quite a bit of raise too. Uh, they could probably just yeah, leave actually, Greymane on this. And it would probably would have been about the same timing. It'll probably be really hard to stutter stab with forty more percent attack speed. True. Uh, but if you're just hitting Immortal, you don't really need the stutter step, I guess. Yeah, I I agree. All right. Generally, you just go the executioner or percent damage. They're down 16, full health immortal, moving on to an already damaged keep that has no wall. This is not the position you want to be in, but it's not impossible either. Activate probation needs to put on the defense of a lifetime. Here comes the immortal. It's now within range. We'll have to see. Can Would you they... try to fight behind the immortal? Down 16? Uh, I th you might have to here. Once the, especially once the key falls. There is the Falling Sword. It dodges quite a bit of damage, actually. Stukov Big Heal comes out. Can they find anything? Ooh, stun there onto Savannah. She's going to get hit by the, uh, the Q a little bit. There's the mind control on the Murden, but it's actually Johanna Gar Oh, my God. Three people oh quickly fall from active information. The damage and scaling coming out from PRR is quite extraordinary. James for being the next to fall as they chase him down, and that immortal is still extremely healthy. And that will be okay. game one going over to Phoenix Rising Ruby. That nano boosted junk rip pirate does so much damage. It's pretty strong. Yeah. 17 kills to two. Uh, both deaths were murdered. I think both were also a result of mind control. So we. Uh, Look at siege damage there. Some uh, hero damage. Hero damage not crazy high, which is usually a sign of a uh, good focus fire, as the damage you do actually uh, gets kills. All right, if you're uh, active information, is there anything from that draft that you're gonna? Well, I guess depending on the map. Are you thinking first pick, map pick? What are you thinking? Oh, did you said PR pick this map? Yeah. So I would say probably map pick because they seem to be they seem to like maps a lot more than first pick. 
uh, based on their play style in exactly one game that we've been able to see. <laughs> Which map do you think they'll pick? Hmm. I'm going to throw a wild guess and I'll say Tomb. Let's see if I'm, if I'm correct. Tomb? Tomb's, not, tomb's a good guess. Uh, could be boring going for all strains. We're going to Towers of Doom and it actually looks like I can have a probation pick the map. We'll have to wait and see if the teams are actually swapping sides or not. It doesn't look like it. All right, so Towers of Doom. Uh, explain the map, Leo. So each team has a core point of 40 points. And then you have to channel these towers that shoot some shots into the core, depending on how many keeps of, well, or forts they have standing on their side and whoever goes to zero for us loses all right uh what's the common strategy like how do you set up your lanes on this map so typically you have a dual soaker that does top top mid and then you have you just have four men rush bottom so uh who who are the good double soakers Oh, I think that's a question for you. <laughs> All right. Uh, so obviously Hogger is extremely good at it. Uh, Sonia can do it. Yorel can do it. The Haka does it a little bit iffy, but he gets the benefit of being global. So uh, if you decide to do a camp invade or your camp gets invaded in the bot lane, you have that. Uh, Murky can double soak. Mafia can double soak. Uh, Murky getting those bribe stacks sometimes means he can get it. It's also one of the easier maps to play TLV on because you're basically guaranteed to go into a double soaker so you just hold the top half of the map and then uh, you're able to pressure multiple little alters at the same time which is a very exciting thing to do uh, yeah. shout out to uh Seventh eighth for designing the caster tool that gives you a button to just uh, swap the team sides with a single button press. Uh, makes it so I don't care if teams swap sides. All the teams are ready, so we're about to roll into game two of Phoenix Rising Ruby versus Academic Probation on Towers of Doom. Was there anything from last game, Leo, that you would ban for this map? From either team. Uh, I don't think Deathwing is a good ban for this map. But otherwise, everything was pretty standard. Nothing like unique. Uh, Johanna you, might be what worth banning out. Johanna can also double suck. You could offline Johanna. That could be spicy. Yeah, that's true. Leoric, we didn't mention Leoric for double soakers either. <laughs> Blaze. Considering my name is Leo Rice, I think I should have mentioned Leoric. Yeah. Uh, we could see the white main van come out again. That could be exciting. I wouldn't mind seeing a white main played, but if you ban it in game one. Oh, it's time they're banned. Oh, never mind. It's this. It's different sides. It's yeah. a blaze ban again. Yeah, it could be a sign that they don't have a blaze player or just because they, uh... Well, uh, it could just be that they're fabbing something else or they're trying to get, like, the hogger. And there's going to be the Joe ban. Uh, Active Probation going to ban that because they're not first pick this time around. And yes, Ektar, I am sorry I don't have channel points. I to him said we can't gamble. Uh, maybe we'll 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 make a side website where you can bet actual cash. <laughs> Be my side hustle. Second band coming out of PRR is Savannah, uh, looking to play around those mind controls, but also the pushing power she could present on this map could be quite a lot with Merc Queen and then the Sappers running in, uh, basically one shotting towers each. Not the fort. All three will do like 75 of the fort with it, but 
the actual towers will go down on the wall fairly quickly. Will academic probation ban the white main? Let's find out. In fact, they will ban the bright wing instead. I don't know if they have a white main player on their team, but it could be fun to find out. That'd be a fun snipe. Yeah. White main can be really impactful in fights. Especially if you're just running around as a four man. Yeah, probably one of the best scaling supports in the game too, by far. We see the gray main coming out this time as a first pick, giving all the time for counter picks over to academic probation. What can they pick to counter the gray main? What would you pick to counter gray main? Well, I would have picked Joanna, or as gray main having slows against gray main is really frustrating because he just can't get your autos in. Teams used to do like main tank Arthas into it. We see a new break, which is like the exact opposite, and we see the Mafia coming out for the double soak. I would have thought there would be better options other than Mafia as earlier as an earlier pickup at least. Uh, I mean it depends. Uh, he's he's a solid double soaker. Double soaks very fast. He's got uh, on a pale horse. Um. Can 1v1 pretty strongly, once, especially with 10, once he has the ult. It's going to be Zul, and there is the white main pickup. Interesting. Zul versus Mathael. Who wins that matchup? Uh, 1v1. I believe it's Mathael. Especially if they're fighting in a lane. Especially post 10. Zul will have a better time clearing, correct? So, uh, so Zul doesn't actually clear that fast. His advantage is he spawns additional minions for your for the opposite person to clear. We see Diablo ban, leaving the Murden pick that they had last game up. Murden would have been a good candidate to green main with his attack speed slow on. True. Well, as the baseline. I wonder what tank PR is going to go then. Stukov banned. Yeah, banning out things you knew that they played in game one. Try to throw them on something that might be less comfortable on. It's the, it's the scouting they did in game one. <laughs> the game one scouting. Yeah. We see Ana Mephisto. This... This is a combo that I know quite well. <laughs> uh, Ana is pretty good into the white main. Uh, the anti-heal means that her high healing throughput and burst healing uh, cannot can't work because you have anti-heal. Uh, Nano boost and Mephisto can shred team fights. He can lock people down with one ult, or he can secure kills with the other. In this game, he'll probably go the brute ult. Uh, just high damage, high team fight orientation. We see Mephisto coming, or Falstead, not Mephisto, Falstead, we see the murder again. Falstead being a global probably means they're going to try to play a, away from the Mephisto a little bit. It's a good adaptation. They could have been planning from it from the start. They may not have, but if they weren't, it is a good adaptation. Try to spread out, play away from the Mephisto uh, with less numbers, and then play for spread out alters. And the last pick from Academic Probation is going to be Cassia. Why don't you Ooh. give us a little run now? What does Cassia offer? Cassia offers a lot of damage. And I would generally think that she's pretty underrated in the current meta. That she could do a lot of damage and she's barely tanky as a DPS. Does she offer anything against Greymane? Oh, right. She, al <laughs> she also has blinds. <laughs> Thanks for the tip. <laughs> All right, we're heading into game two on Towers of Doom with Active Information versus Phoenix Rising Ruby. And on the side of Active Information, we have Mafia being played by Jam Serendai, Newman on Cassia, Logicalia on Ana, Little Killer Pony playing a Nubarak, and Koji Haru on Mephisto. And on the right, so we have Wa Hui on Mirrodin, and the <laughs> on White Mane, Fear on Zul. 
frag Stellar on Falstead, and I missed the last one. Just really and off. mixed cells on Greymane. Yeah. And I apologize for butchering the names too. <laughs> we, we are not proficient English speakers on this Twitch channel. Apologize for butchering names. Look, at least Fear gets his name pronounced correctly. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's look at it. Look, we do of course have the on the pale horse. We're gonna see Thunderstroke uh, on Cassiet. We'll see how close she gets to finishing that quest. Uh, Sleep darts, Regen Master, Noob, Furious Spark, Dwarf Block, Pity the Frail, which is, I think, the talent that kind of helps White Man be extremely good. Shackler, so more CDR on the shield, uh, and it has a slowing aura. And then Viciousness. And then we're going to see a Q build falls then. And the teams are uh, wave clearing. This is level one. No one, no one went for any kind of greedy quick picks here. But both teams scale extremely well. And uh, Jamster actually went ahead and tried to get the head on his rotation by starting top. Yeah. So the teams uh, just rotating here. Murden trying to slow them down. Uh, ooh, a new brick gonna dive there onto the false head, but Sleep Dark comes out. Nothing really gained or lost there. Just has a little bit of time. Jamster, one whole wave on this double soak ahead. Can put him in good position. Do you think it will be skeleton build or W build uh, Zul? I typically like skeleton build more. W build is just... You relies on the other players to be not as good as you. Uh, w build plays better in team fights. It's got the self sustain, attack speed, uh, damage reduction later on. But the skeleton build uh, means you have in lane sustain, you can push a little bit harder. And we do see PRR finish their camp a little bit sooner. And James are being ahead of these rotations. He's going to rotate down here. They're going to try to find Murder. They sleep dart him out of his jump. There's going to be the fend from Cassie. And Mafio's trying to do as much damage as he can. James is trying to chase him down there with his passive, trying to suck him out there with his Q. But it's not going to be quite enough. White Man's going to, to be able to keep that up. But Jamf is going to run off now. Uh, missing a little bit of XP top. Trying for that kill. But at least his team's able to secure the camp. But can they push it in? Both teams here in the bot lane. Trying to stop the enemy camp from doing damage. There's a sun for a new break. And the anti-heal going there on the Murden. And that's going to be... Ooh, Murden getting low. But he's going to jump out. Well, this Mephisto is doing a lot of damage. That is, in fact, what Mephistos do. Zul trying to do top camp here, so he's going to go ahead and let Greyman cover in mid lane. Good communication on their part to say, hey, I'm going to be missing a wave. It's going to pick it up. James is going to smith it out because of that, though, and it's going to force Fear to take a oh, oh, step away from that. Die alone means that the Jamster is going to be an absolute monster to fight 1v1 right now. Look. You know me, you know I don't like the talent spite on Mephisto. Uh, it was picked, and uh, I'm just disappointed, and we're gonna leave it at that. Oh, it's a Q build, so I guess we're both wrong. Oh, Q build. Uh, it's it's not that bad, honestly. All of all of his talents are pretty solid since his rework. Uh, it comes with the anti-heal leader as well, too. Little Killer Pony taking quite a bit of damage there. They're trying to poke him out. White Mane slowly losing her mana as she tries to do this. There comes the Mothail piloted by Jamster. Pony still getting low. There's going to be a double sleep dart from this noob. So they're going to go there onto the Great Mane trying to find him in the back. But Pony's going to fall down instead. Jamster being chased out by the Great Mane. But he's trying to do what he can. But the healing for White Mane is just going to be too much. He's going to be forced out. But he's in fact going to be found. And he's going to go down next. Koji Haru on the Mephisto is trying to clean this up into the group. Fend another friend from Randai coming out, but instead he's going to be stunned there by the Murda. He's going to be the next to fall. And unfortunately, they're just barely not able to find kills into this white maid right now on the side of academic probation. But that could change heavily with tens. I think tens is going to be huge for uh, academic probation. To actually yeah, queue would... into Skeleton Boom. Does, is there, wait, is there a Q on the 7? Yes. Uh, I find this Cassia level 4 interesting though, because you usually take this with basic attack build. 
We see and Jam Search sniffed out fear there on the camp, but he didn't know Murden was there. Guardians is gonna force him out. Fear pretty low in mana, doesn't really have the mana's the same when he's outside of lane from Skull Sizzles. But knowing that there's two top, this could give Economic Provision the uh, time they need to push this camp in. Graven's actually mid now, too. They could definitely look for an aggressive play, potentially. But again, it is a white man. White man's healing is just kind of crazy unless you burn her out of mana. He's doing a really good job in keeping her mana high, too. We have slowing uh, Fend in Q build coming out of Cassia. As now we're going to see the double altar phase top come out as these teams rotate towards mid. Just going to take the time to clear mid lane. Uh, I expect these teams to just clear, especially Pony taking quite a bit of damage here. Maybe PRR will feel confident to step up, but they definitely don't have anyone to stall. PRR's altar on the side of active probation. They're gonna push in here. Fear running in there, gonna get a Q, just gonna spawn a skeletal major there on James. He's gonna stall this. But this is actually a decent uh, place for Mephisto to fight right now. There's gonna be a stun from Pony. Cleanse coming out onto the Murden. James, they're low, but it doesn't matter. Here comes a huge Fen. <laughs> and now they're gonna chase them down. Active probation looking to clean this fight up as best they can. Gonna get two for none. And this is their chance to uh, go ahead and get ahead, try to catch up in uh, XP, try to get the 10 at around the same timing. If they catch all the lanes of Soap, they might get it soon. Well, not the same time, but shortly after. That was a really greedy fight. And they were like 9.8 from PRR before that fight. So if they backed away and waited for 10, then they would have been in a, a lot better spot. You see the gust. And now their XP through. is equal thanks to that. Yeah, Divine Reckoning. Of course, we do see the Durance of Hate and the like, Nano. And we're going to see Lightning Bolt come out. Would you have preferred that or would you have preferred Valkyrie? I think Lightning Bolt is better for team fights. Valkyrie is actually pretty hard to. Uh, Nuke dives land into the backline there. Murden going to try to peel, but he's taking quite a bit of damage. It's actually Nano. A Mothail here, trying to burn through the Divine Reckoning. Durance of Hate goes there, hits only one. He's going to be cleansed of it. There goes the Gust to try to clean up the camp, but the camp's already being kicked by Act on Probation. Graeme's going to be able to finish the Ana. Can they get out? They got the camp, but they're not going to escape with their lives on the side of Act on Probation. Jamster's going to try to ulti. It's not going to be quite enough. White man able to spam enough gears. There's going to be the Cocoon on to Falstead to try to keep alive. Slight burrow forward for the shield there from the level 7. And now PRR is going to invade Active Reformations camp. They're going to be able to get oh, in time. The CC from the Bruiser of Greyman is just wreaking havoc in the back line. They might. Uh, I, I feel like the Cassia line should be able to help out a lot with that. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes. happens going forward. Fisto also can do a lot of damage here, and I'd like to see them nano him instead of the Mafio. Yeah, without Tormented Souls, it's a much better option. Ooh, White Man able to finish the channel in time. And I'm sorry we missed part of the fight because my cat just laid down on the escape button. They're actually going here onto the Murden. There's go the Durance of Hate onto the White Man. This is the target they could be looking for. There's no anti heal coming in. The Divine Reckoning, they're all standing in, so they're all getting healed so much. And in fact, White Man still have full HP. Now the turnaround for PRR. There goes the Gust and Kutra Heimer. And he's going to go down to the Grey Maid, followed quickly by the Mephisto. Randai Newman's going to be the next to fall, most likely, from getting hit by the, no the Poison Nova from the Zul. Still, that mid altar there. They wait too long. Academic information could come back. Still respawn. I feel like they just forgot about it. All right, wait means on it now. Uh, Murden's zoning for it. We'll still be able to secure it. Looks like academic probation is just looking for thirteens.
48 stacks on Cassie Q. Is that on time or is that ahead or below? Around like 60 is pretty good by like level 20. Or 7, 60 to 70. It's generally what I hit. But depends on what 16 she goes to see how fast her stacks increase. Yeah, this will be interesting because I, I know I like the... Uh... The fend Q and you like the pierce now, so we're interesting to see what uh, Rendai goes here. But first, they need to get the chains. I would say pierce is good on maps with a lot of chokes. So like towers, there's a lot of chokes where he would just funnel in. We have gloves coming up from Cassie for the attack range, a little bit safety there. We have unstoppable, of course. Well, the big thing for Ekmer probation here is that they have purifying darts from Ana, so the Zul roots should. Excuse me. Never do anything really a whole lot now because every Q from Ana can just remove it. One yeah. sapper does get through there. The uh, positioning right now from PRR is pretty good. They're not having too many people be hit by Mephisto at a time. But this camp invade may be a little greedy. I guess Jam's just still in top lane, but is able to be scouted out by Mothiel. Sleep Dart goes out onto two. Are they able to do anything? Mafiel now here in the back lane. Both teams looking to fight here. You know the altar's just now spawning. Greyman getting hit by the Mafiel E. Uh, Dirge comes out. It's going to hit one, but it's going to be cleansed up. But it's going to still stay onto the Murden. Divine Reckoning comes out. It's going to try to fully heal. And it, there, it is the healing Aww. from these Divine Reckonings just doing so much work. They need to uh, find their anti-heal onto these targets if they're going to try to finish these kills. Because this white mean is putting in the work. I see why they banned it in game one. Now they think about it, there is not a Q talent at 7 on Zul. It's skeleton W or spell armor on shield. Yeah. I was thinking about it. Oh, it's the, it's the root talent for a white mean on 16. It's not easy to to land the root, but if you get it, it's going to be a lot of value. What is the white yeah. healing number right now? 59,000 to 34,000. Yeah, white, Na white main has been putting everybody from half to full every fight, and they're just bundling into the Divine Reckoning, which is not the Collapse doing. coming in from PRR. There's going to be the gust there onto the corner. The counter oh, ulti from eight. Mephisto though, Cocoon onto Murden. They're gonna quickly turn that kill around. Do they have enough left over oh. to kill the Murden? There's the sleep dart. He jumps away afterwards. He's getting hit by Mephisto. Fear's there now. He's gonna try to look to turn this around maybe. Or at least peel for him. And they're able to knock them away. Meanwhile, Jamster is able to keep double soaking in the top, which is gonna help them catch up in XP. 142 Q stacks on uh, False that I just realized. Oh, it's Pierce for Cassia. 142 Q stacks is an insane amount of Q stacks on Falston. Yeah, that's pretty insane. They find Fear out, but can they finish him off? No, they cannot. This is the second triple alter phase. Uh, we'll have to see how teams spread around. It looks like PRR is just gonna, because they're just now reviving, it's gonna try to play around at the top, at least make sure that there's a Z carry. We're just gonna give I can't probation too. They're not able to stall it in time with the false dead. And since PRR is gonna stray onto boss here, trying to make sure they also get four shots here, basically making it so that that alter phase was completely even and it was a four spawn. Champs are seeing it, but not soon enough but soon enough for his team to go ahead and start on their own siege camp here the new brack and mephisto has not picked the 16s yet oh what is this 16 by mephisto and oh my god what is this 16 on new brack i thought meta picks yeah, so we see some uh, interesting adaptation here the my spell power could honestly just be to help keep the white main healing down uh because i believe bed of bards procs it like, you don't have to be actually stunned by it. You just need to be hit by the bat as well. Good Mephisto damage coming out here. We do see the uh, the extra duration coming out. But also the bonus damage can scale up. And I guess he decided the bonus damage was better than the percentage damage. 
we'll have to see how this plays out for him. Um, and then yeah, we have the Pierce there. Zul in the top lane trying to secure this uh, fort, but has he overstayed? Because I think Jamster can kill him. Jamster doesn't have ulti, so maybe he can't. Poison Nova comes out though. So, uh, it's, it's oh, the poison over. Yeah, that's so good. He secured that right, and it's going to tick down, and there's no time for uh, anyone on active information to get that back before this altar, which means they're either going to shoot less shots or have more damage taken. Coach Haru is going to take quite oh. a bit, but he's going to get forced back in. There goes the instant gust. That's a great gust. And now that means with that kill, 20 is going to be picked up here on the side of PRR, and they're trying to secure another kill. Unstoppable coming out from Mephisto, or Mafiel, but it's actually going to be on the next to fall. The Great Main damage too much there. Pony's going to go ahead and get rooted here, and it is the anti-heal coming out from Zul. Quick burn on that cocoon, and they're going to look to take this uh, keep down here. And we do have the ear wolf again, so if he has his W going, they're going to shred through this building. I mean, even without it, they're going to shred this building, right? Murd impatiently yeah. waiting next to the altar. There's gonna be six shots. Five shots? Five shots. Six shots. Six shots. Math. Yes. Ooh, this is gonna be hard for Matteo to take the towers because he doesn't have the best tower push. He does have uh, Cassie here and minions do quite a bit, but they're they're risking getting six capped and there's a bottom siege camp and they only have two HP left on their core. They need to try to get as much done here as they can. And they're down 20, so it's hard for them to actually take a fight. Oh, they, that was close. They almost took one shot. They're able to dodge the damage there. They're going to be able to pick up 20 here in mid lane from the minions in the death zone. And then they're able to potentially take a fight down here. And it's all going to come down to the defending. They have to defend five of these six sappers if they want to stay alive. Huge amount of damage there on Jamster. The amount of false damage well, right now. Oh my push. gosh. Jamster yeah, taking so much damage from the Poison Nova as well. There's the Gust coming out. It's the Divine Reckoning to group them all back up. The huge root, and it's already too late. Mothiel has returned, but unfortunately, their core has not. Alrighty. Take a quick look at these stats. We see uh, a lot of a lot of XP, a lot of soak there from those offlaners. Healing numbers wise, is though Ana not quite as high as White Main, but that's what White Main does. She just pumps healing numbers, absolutely pumps them. All right, uh, let me go ahead and message uh, Pearson on PRR. Uh, well, they're not accepting uh, interviews. Let's try... Well, not accepting whispers, but I'll try another player real quick. Yeah, alright. Able to message that player. So we will try to get an interview. Uh, thank you for all of you who came and watched. Uh, what did you think of that game? That was, I thought the Mephisto 16 would have, at 16 Mephisto could have been able to carry the game, but one little misposition and then they managed to catch him, which is really unfortunate, or just good play by the other team. And then the momentum just shifted back really right. quickly. Uh, we're going to move into a lobby channel in the NGS Discord, uh, and then they will be sending someone for an interview. Cool. Yeah, uh, overall, I, I I thought the PRR played very well. Uh, they kind of knew their conditions. They knew it very well. Uh, Green Main play was excellent. You talked about how Green Main uh, wasn't often picked. Speaking of which, we actually have the Green Main player here. Hello. Bonjour. Bonjour. Do you speak French? Mm, kind of. I learned a bit in high school, and I think that's the extent of my knowledge. Oh, I know. Uh, I know <laughs> one of like the East teams this season uh, do their comms in French. 
Really? Yeah. yeah, so that's why I was interested. They're French Canadian. Ah. Uh, that's actually pretty interesting. Yeah. They might how, live right across the border from me. Uh, how are you guys uh, feeling? That was, a, that was a good first game of the, of the season, I think. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it felt very good from my perspective. Uh, we uh, so we played in the previous NG, well, not the last NGS season, but the one before that. And then you know we took a break for a season, and so when we were coming back, we were kind of worried, like we we haven't played in a bit. Are we still going to be you know up to par? And um, I, I guess I'm happy to say that it seems like we're still good here, which is the the big win for me above anything. Just like. We're able to play. We're able to play as a functional team despite being away for so long. So uh, that's kind of my thoughts on that. That's good. That's good. Uh, let's talk about game one, Battlefield of Eternity. Uh, why the Deathwing pick? We wanted to start simple. That was actually sort of my suggestion from the start, um, just starting into the season, we wanted to start simple. Battlefield of Eternity, there's not much market to worry about, just, you know, the your lane and, and um, you know, in the fights. But Deathwing was because um, you don't really need anything to push top. We were already thinking about it from the very beginning of the draft, and they picked a whole bunch of CC and uh, weak uh, offline that's weak Deathwing, so it's like, yeah, perfect, let's do it. Um, and it uh, yeah it works well with what what we have with the rest of the team. We never really had to bring him in for for team fights though. That was our plan. That's why we had Deathwing and Junkrat together. But they kind of like banned out all my healers, so we couldn't do any and doing Johanna like bomb combos with Deathwing. But it still worked out. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, Leo, do you have any questions on game one? Game one. Nope. Nope. That's All, right. The question. <laughs> All right. All right. Game one. Game one. Yeah. It's a. Well. It was. A... I'll ask my second question. Game two. <laughs> uh, game two. Uh, you guys went into it. Were you surprised that they didn't ban the white main, or did you feel like you guys presented enough threats in the first game that they were going to leave it open? I think white main is that threatening. I like, sure I play it a lot, but. <laughs> no, maybe that. No, I'm sandbagging it right now so that I get to play White Wing more later this season. That's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, no, I think I White Wing is really the strong healer now, no, but um, it was good to have White Wing as a comfort pick again. Yeah, I, I think the opposing team did their research very well and uh, knew what Dandler was good with. So the uh, bands in the first match kind of reflected that. And I, I don't know, uh, as for the bands for the second, I suppose they were just thinking more generalized uh, and that's kind of what we were doing as well trying to figure out like you know it's towers you can run a, a dual po uh, dual soak and just have four man push in the bottom and so that's what we ended up going with I think it worked out well for us there was uh, there was the one unfortunate team fight uh, where I think the Mephisto my, my Divine Reckoning never actually went off at the end <laughs> We all died. It's, we were aiming to be clumped, even if we do get into that big Anubarek, you know, um, Matho combo, just that Divine Reckoning would have completely nullified their effects, but that never went off. And if I'm in a cocoon, I can't do that. So that's that's their counter, right? That, but otherwise, White Moon is very good to, to have those um, single lane um, matchups where you just stay in the lane and keep fighting because, you know, you're just full on sustain. Yeah, you get, you get so much divine reckoning value. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. Insane. I saw people go from half the team go from half health to full health in one fight. Yeah, that one time they were they were chasing. They were obviously setting up a combo. I thought it was going to be on Muradin, but it actually hit me instead. I guess I wasn't paying attention. It hit me, so I just consecrated myself after they all went in and they all died. <laughs> uh, Leo, do you have any actual questions for game two? <laughs> then he's not really good at ass thinking about oh, it on the spot. All right, all right. Uh, do you guys have any uh, shout outs you want to do as we wrap up the interview? Uh, shout out to Dana Lore, the birthday boy. Hello. Mm. Happy, birthday. Birthday Ooh, happy birthday. Happy <laughs> birthday. 
Uh, I'd also like to shout out the the Phoenix Rising organization in general. Even though the whole is, in all honesty, kind of crumbled, I, I still want to hold that banner high just because, you know, it's it was it was the start for me, for our team, actually. So even if the organization is going through a rough patch, I still feel that, you know, I just want to say thank you to to Kovi, to Seth, to everybody from that team, or from that organization, you know? That, that's about my shout-outs. Oh, also, shout-out to Jazlo, too. Uh, good good friend of mine, and still part of the team this year. I uh, can't wait to see to bring him out later and play with him. Uh, what about you, Dana Lore? Um, now you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I just shout out Wuhui. He took over the basically most of the captaining and scheduling duties that, that we were both doing uh, in previous seasons. He's really stepped up and have um, he's somewhat new to the NGS scene, but he's really he's been enthusiastic about doing it. And, uh, and yeah, at least he was the one to get the team back together, I think. There you go. Uh, Leoris, do you have any shout outs you want to do? Uh, Shout out to the past casters that couldn't show up in Flip Fox and Patience. <laughs> and of course, to Majesty for casting. Alrighty. Uh, thank you guys all for coming out and uh, watching. Those that did, thank you to both teams for putting on such an excellent show. And thank you, NGS, for putting it all together. And as always, we will see you next time in the Nexus.